What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mass and Drum Whiskey Room on this Wednesday night. It is time to get started. Time to get pumped up. We have an amazing show tonight, guys. What the hell is up? Um, really happy to have you guys in uh, hanging out tonight. Bourbon Sane. Chris was back. Back on the airwaves tonight on the Whiskey 2 Nation. Uh, good to see you, man. Thanks for... Uh, he did a, uh, he actually did a, a port, a blind port wine tasting. Uh, went through some crazy different super aged port wines and then was drinking some whiskey. It's good to have you back, buddy. Uh, let's check out the chat, see what everyone's doing tonight. We have a lot of fun stuff that we're going to be doing tonight, guys. We're going to have a lot of uh, crazy conversation about some of the releases this year for 2020, which were a plenty. I have opinions. I have opinions you guys like uncut unfiltered jason well tonight he's coming out so uh you're gonna get to hear some of my opinions on some of the releases that were released out you know all throughout 2020 some rise some of the bourbons uh we might have some a couple of horses in there i'm going to talk about it but tonight i am starting off with a uh, smoke wagon private barrel select which is probably one of my favorite um probably one of my favorite new bourbon brands that I tried this year. Just love Smoke Wagon. We had uh, Alec on the channel this year. So uh, it was awesome. So cheers, guys. Thanks for coming in. All right. We had a bunch of people hanging out in the chat early on, including the, the legend Nancy Fraley, who was hanging out in the chat talking to some of you guys uh, nice and early. Uh, hoping to get her on, you know, as soon as we can next year. She's a busy lady, but I have a really cool idea when she does come on the, the show because she's also a fellow drummer. So we're going to be talking drums, getting nerdy about whiskey. That's going to be a phenomenal show uh, when that happens. So looking forward to that. Uh, DC is in the house. Cheech Artelino, Adam Shelton. Uh, let's see. SG Flynn H1. What's up? Oh, no. SG Flying High 1. Flying High 1. What's up, man? Uh, what else we got today? Let's see. John Ferrin's in the house. We have, let's see, Ryan Butler's here. Karen B. Ford. Nice to see you, Karen. Uh, Destination Bourbon was here. Crime Time Michael Klein. What is up, buddy? We got Swan is here. You may know Swan from the uh, uh, This Is My Bourbon podcast from, from Perry's podcast. Tim Gorgeous is here. What's up? KMT4841 is in the house. What's up? Uh, Kay Jackson, Honest Charlie, Gary Franchi, Mike Franklin. What's up, guys? Uh, let's see. Got a bunch of people jumping in here. Uh, let's see. Adam Shelton. I think I called you out. Dram Hounds in the house. What's up? Aiden Craig. Nice to see you too, buddy. As always. Uh, let's see here. Barry Hawk is in the house. Barry Hawk's a brand new patron as about 10 seconds ago. Cheers, Barry. Nice to have you into the, uh, the, the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room family. David Goldman's here. David Webb is here. Yeah, we're going to have some good sipping tonight for sure. Uh, let's see. Kelsey Dropping Dimes is in the house. What's up, buddy? Nice to see you. Cameron Lochner's here. Jeff Huck. Steve A., the original wrench. <laughs> What's up, man? Nice to see you as well. Uh, Robotics here. Spencer Mav. Sugar. What's up, Sugar Kitty? ADHD Whiskey's here, the world's best whiskey taster. Nice to see you as well. Uh, what's up, Danny Lynn? Will Hendo Henderson is in the house. Gary Keeping It Franchi's in the house. Of course, we have Bourbon Sane. He came over here. All right, just running through. Oh, we already got Super Chats here. All right, so this is what's going to happen, guys. First, let me keep track. William Edwards says, we like your opinions. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, we got Rare Bird 101 is here. Cohen is here. Uh, Jennifer Basile is here. What's up, Jennifer? She's family. Basile, how you doing, Jen? Nice to see you in the chat. Uh, let's see. What else? Ryan Yin, love your channel. Love you for dropping in. Stanley Wagner Jr., what's up, Wags? Uh, even in all, Sherry G. Oh, that's Sherry G. SG Flying High 1. That's Sherry G. Nice to see you. Uh, Andrew, well, Adam Dorman, how do we get one of those hats? Uh, I'm having the next batch being made right now, buddy. So they are coming. They go to my Patreons first. 
Uh, I have a batch of 50 coming, uh, and then the rest will go to whoever wants them. Andrew uh, Buchanan what says, let's friggin' go. Uh, Stanley Wags, you giving up one of those smoke wagons? No, not sure, but I will tell you what we are giving away tonight. So I have two bottles uh, that I got tonight that I want to give to you guys because it's the holidays. So any super chat amount you put in, you will get in the drawing. So if any of the mods, either Donnie, Linux Cats here, uh, Richie Z, uh, DC, I think he was going to be helping keep track too. That's, of course, if uh, if the wrench, um, Trev Wilson, is unable to come. Hey, Whiskey Crusaders in the house. What's up, man? Everybody, go check out Whiskey Crusaders. Uh, Ryan Butler's here. I won't flex any more of the stream. Guy having <laughs> – yes, he was he was telling us how good of a week he's had with some uh, really good bourbon hunting from Ryan. Uh, love the channel. Keep it coming, says uh, Bar Chenger Subman. Sub, sub, sub <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that, but thank you. First time Super Chat, thoughts on Super Aged Bourbon and the time to let it open for drinking and enjoying. Currently drinking Rhetoric 25. Took a long time to open up and not be woody. Yeah, John, I would actually agree with that. I think it depends on the whiskey, but most most ones with that type of age on it, you know, a lot of, you know, tightness, a lot of flavors and oakiness get stored up in those, in the neck of the uh, the bottle. So you know, it stays tight in there. I think that's a big reason why a lot of people didn't like the Old Forester 1910 in the beginning. A lot of that oakiness and that tightness was in the neck port. It needed some time to open up. I think that's really what happens with some older whiskeys. Jeffrey Wack, I love lamp. I love lamp. Yes. Love the content. Most informed reviews on whiskey too. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate that. I try, buddy. So what we're going to be giving away tonight, uh, like I said, any super chat gets you in the running. I have, You have two chances to win. Uh, these were brand new Ohio picked, um, makers mark private selects that just came out. So I don't know if you guys heard about these. So I think it was around the summertime. They released a whole batch of these and, uh, people were, um, going crazy trying to collect them all here. So they just released a new set of them for the holidays, kind of holiday themed. So I was lucky enough to grab two of them this week to give to you guys. So one of them is called bread pudding. Uh, I just thought that was, I love bread pudding, so I grabbed it. Um, this has a really, this is 108.4 proof. Uh, obviously this is barrel strength. It's got, I'll get, here's the breakdown of the staves for that one, I'll show you guys that. So if any of you guys like to keep track of the staves, there they are. Um, and then the other one I got is called grandpa's toddy, which, if you like roasted French mocha staves and your Maker's Mark Private Selects, this has eight of them. That's why I grabbed it because it just sounded like a complete monster, like a like a totally chocolatey, just nuts type of uh, blend here. Uh, there's the there's the breakdown. You see that number eight there? That's the wrench, the French mocha spice there. I mean, crazy. So it has eight staves of the French mocha and then one and one of the other. So. Uh, you guys will get to win uh, something about two lucky winners tonight, giving away uh, one of each of these. So good luck to you all. Got a bunch of super chats I need to catch up on. Uh, let's see here. Holy crap. You guys are bringing it here. Uh, Kilco, I am here. Give me whiskey. Well, good luck, buddy. Everyone go check out Kilco. He's been putting out some cool, uh, uh, some cool content lately. John Morris, Jason, I just bought Bartstown number three. Wow, it was awesome. I told you, man, that Bartstown Discovery three is a hitter. Uh, H Hempel is here. What's up, uh, Steve A? First, Phil Whiskey is wondering if he's eligible to win in New Zealand. Ah, I don't know how shipping is there right now, buddy. Um, I don't know if I could do that, unfortunately. Yeah, being in New Zealand, I don't know if I'd be able to ship it there, especially with the way shipping is right now. I mean, they're checking everything. Uh, but if anything, maybe I could, you know, get a sample out there maybe if if need be. Uh, Whiskey Blender Fraley says, I'm very sorry to say I haven't tried Smoke Wagon yet. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, Nancy, it's you probably really appreciate Smoke Wagon. They are just blending some great MGP bourbons putting them together, 
pulling out some different flavors. Really love what they're doing. Uh, Ryan Yin with a 499 Super Chat. Uh, Joe Edwards, save water, drink bourbon. <laughs> you got to have your water. Uh, let's see. Jeff Perkins just poured the last three ounces of my Bardstown Discovery 3. I think I need a second bottle. Yeah, that stuff That stuff is, is great. Elijah Craig, small batch. Um, absolutely, Jason. I bought Bardstown because of your recommendation. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, man, because it's really good. Uh, let's go for a sip here. All right, so tonight, besides going through, so if you guys watch Bourbon Pursuit uh, a couple of weeks ago, they did a they did a roundtable. Fred Minnick was on, you know the uh, uh, Breaking Bourbon, the usual guys that were on that that uh, podcast. They were talking like 2020 releases. They got into pretty good detail about them and uh, you know some of the hits, some of the misses. So I thought I would kind of do the same thing. They didn't get a chance to go through as many as I wanted them to, but I figured I could do that tonight a little bit, go through some hits, just basically say hit, miss, and then give it kind of a middle ground of on the fence still. Like one that I wasn't sure if I hated it or if I loved it. So we'll go through a bunch of different releases tonight just to get my, you know, now that I went back on it, uh, back to some of these whiskeys and kind of retasted them and kind of made a, a, a judgment, like a final judgment for 2020 in my head. Um, and then a little bit later on, we're going to be doing a blind tasting because I I, I decided this year I'm going to just do a top 10 favorite bourbon list. Um, I'm not going to separate finish. I'm not going to separate, you know, any of these other different categories, whether it's premium or allocated. It just, you know, it makes just it, it just makes things too crazy. Plus, there weren't a ton of bourbons this year that really blew me away. Um, so I think just keeping it to like my top 10. Uh, will be good. But there are a few bourbons that are on the fringe that I'm not sure how to round out my top 10 just yet. So tonight, I figured I want to throw in some some bourbons that were kind of on the fringe that I really liked, but wasn't really sure if I wanted to put them in my top 10 this year, just yet. Um, and that's Old Forester 150th Batch 1. Uh, Remus Repeal Batch uh, number 4. Uh, Blood Oath pack number six and uh, the 2020 uh, Colonel Taylor barrel proof, which was definitely a hitter, but that Colonel Taylor barrel proof to me is just really one of those consistent releases every year. If you get to try it, that's so good. Um, but I really have to put it against other things to really, it to really feel if it's as good as I think it is. Um, and then also the really special pour we're going to be having tonight is this guy right here. We're gonna be cracking open the 2020 uh, Eagle Rare 17 from the BTAC collection. Uh, we're gonna be testing this tonight. I need to get this opened up a little bit so I can do a full review for you guys next week. So I figured why not crack it open tonight and try it with you guys, uh, get some first impressions and see how it is. I was very lucky with, with this this year. I think this is gonna be the only BTAC I get but this is a hell of a BTAC to get because I never thought I'd ever see this or own this bottle. So we're going to be opening this tonight, too, guys. So hell yes. Uh, let's see. Favorite time of year when we get to see all the lists from our favorite whiskey tubers. Yeah, they're going to be hitting. Bring on the whiskey, says Jerry Black. Will Henderson says, cheers, brother. Deborah Cohen, more bourbon, please. Yes. Uh, love me some bread pudding. Yeah, me too. Uh, Maureen Franchi says, Aiden Craig, from this nurse, you are welcome, and I'm very glad you're healthy and recovered from COVID. Every, please stay healthy and mask up and keep your distance. Oh, Aiden Craig, from this nurse. Oh, that's very nice of you, Maureen. Hope it, Aiden, you're hope you're feeling better, buddy. Um, let's see here. Fourth row, fourth rope. Thank you, man. You're in. Oh my God, a chartreuse with envy over the ER-17. <laughs> yeah, I did not think I would get this bottle at all. So, um, all right, we got, man, 313 in the chat. This is awesome, guys. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, before we dive into the, um, well, we're going to we're gonna taste Eagle Rare first. So let's just dive in, guys. Let's do this shit. What I will do is actually pour some and then just let it open up a little bit. So here it is. 
Let me move this out of the way. So I haven't even I haven't even touched this yet, guys. So I'm excited to try this. Uh, I've heard probably more mixed reviews over the Eagle Rare 17 uh, 2020 than anything. So I'll be surprised at how much you know how good or not it is. We'll see. So I got to try the 20 the 2019 last year. Uh, Prime time Michael Klein destination bourbon. He sent over a sample and. Uh, as much as I did love it, I, I did think it was lacking a little bit of a finish, which is something I give Buffalo Trace a lot of shit for because their stuff is very sweet. It's very, ooh. You know what? Whoever wins a bottle tonight of the uh, of the makers, I'll throw in a one ounce sample of this too with it because not a lot of people get a chance to try this stuff, and uh, you know why not share it because. I'm not going to drink all of it myself. Well, I probably could, but I'll throw one ouncer of, uh, of this stuff. And it'll be good, too, for you guys, whoever wins it, because this will be opened up a little bit. I'm just going to take a quick smell. Oh, okay. All right. I see you, Eagle Rare. I see you. <laughs> uh, all right. Jason, love your review. You're always on the money. I got into bourbon because of you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Scott. That's really nice of you. Appreciate that. Uh, cheers to your continued success, Jason. Oh, appreciate that, Cheech. Might as well try, says Bill Sloan. Good luck, buddy. Um, hey, Linus Cal, I think I said hi to you, buddy. How, you, how are you? Uh, I, I think DC is keeping track, Linus Cat, but you could check with him. I think he was keeping track of the names. Uh, Joe Pastrana, awesome. Uh, let's see. Yeah, right? The clug, 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 clug sound, just pouring it, Nancy. <laughs> Did I hear BTAC samples? Yes. I will I will throw in a one-ounce sample of the Eagle Rare 17 with the winners tonight. So, um, all right. Uh, Phil... Uh, Phil says, love to get my hands on Remus Repeal Batch. Hope that juice is just as sexy. Um, I've already tried the Repeal Batch 4. I think it's great. I think I still love the 3 over the 4. I, I say if you see the Remus Repeal Batch with the Roman numeral 3 on the neck tag, that's a buy any day of the week. Um, I had a buddy of mine, uh, David, who texted me and he said, hey, uh, are these are these a buy on the shelf? Um, and it was the, the Roman numeral three. I'm like, yeah, buy that all day. He bought one. He went home. He tried it. He went back to the store. I think he bought like three more bottles. Hey, what's up? Eric Evanson's in the house. How you doing, buddy? Zach Andrews is here. Holy crap. So even though this says 17 years, this is actually an 18 year bourbon in this bottle. It's 18 years and I think three months. Um, so just crazy. Um, yeah, Remus three is outstanding. I totally agree with you, Brett. Uh, so, all right, so let's hit some, a couple of new stories. There was a, a couple of interesting, um, releases I wanted to talk about. And one of them was, uh, let's see here. Let me just find the info on it. Oh, here it is. This one right here. I wanted to kind of get your guys' opinion on it. This is the new Woodford Reserve Masters Collection, new bottle shape. This is the very fine, rare bourbon. So this is limited edition release, 17 years of age. Now, remember, this includes 17 years of age that date back to 2003. So this is a significant year for Chris Morris, the master distiller. The first year he held this position 17 years ago, um, uh, assistant Elizabeth McCall used very rare barrels in this release uh, uh, and, along with Chris to blend together. So it'll be available. It's available this month for $130. Um, now again, like most things that Woodford Reserve puts out, um, it's only 90.4 proof. Now, uh, so something like this for 90.4 proof. Now you could say whatever you want about Woodford, whether you love it or you hate it, um, or you just like it. I think Woodford Reserve is very solid. I love the double oaked. I want a cast strength double oaked. 
If anyone out there, you know, is working at Woodford Reserve, I want a cast strength double oaked uh, just to see how that would taste. Um, I, I'm a big fan of their batch proof, the Woodford Reserve batch proof. It's, you know, trying their distillate, which is a blend of pot still. Remember, what Woodford Reserve does, it's a little bit different, even though they're Brown Foreman. Uh, they're owned by the Brown Foreman umbrella. Remember, they're mixing pot still uh, distilled bourbon with column still uh, bourbon from uh, from Brown Foreman as well. So that blends together to create, you know, most of the Woodford, the mo uh, most of the Woodford Reserve products. So um, I think that's what gives it that little bit of a spice and that really nice balance that Woodford Reserve lovers really, you know, care about. So uh, it just kills me though that a lot of these Woodford Reserve Masters collections come out at 90.4 proof, commanding a you know a big price tag. Uh, I just you know I just wish they would just make it at least 100 proof, just a little bit, just get us a little bit more, or even 98 if you want to stay above, uh, if you want to stay under 100. But I will say, people that love Woodford Reserve are absolute Woodford Reserve like super fans. They love their whiskey the way it is. So I can see from that standpoint why they would want to leave it at 90.4. But at the same time, you know, for more of the whiskey enthusiasts, I just wish they would up it sometimes. Uh, let's see here. Taylor Rousey, uh, YouTube bourbon lottery cast rank double oak would be awesome. Hell yeah, right? Uh, my order of seven bottles arrived today, but just lost my taste due to COVID. Just here for tasting notes to imagine. Oh, Jacob, sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, I mean, when COVID takes away your, your taste and your smell, you know, it's weird. I'm sure it's weird for, you know, a lot of people when that happens. It's just, you know, I hear it, it takes a little while to get back. So it's just one of those things. Um, yeah, hope you're better soon, Jacob. Absolutely. Uh, Master Drum price point on that. Not that we'll see one. Uh, $130 for the Woodford Reserve. $130. Now, remember, there's a nice big 16-year age statement on the bottle. But remember... There's, it's not fully 16, it's blended in there. So you might have a very small amount of 16 year in there that's blended with other stuff. So again, you have to, it, it really depends on how much you love Woodford Reserve. Uh, Woodford Reserve, double O cast, I'm gonna be awesome. 110 proof would be the sweet spot. I think so too, Jerry. I just wish it would, you know. Yeah, I think the price is good. It's really in line with what Woodford offers. Uh, I think that price point makes 90.4 proof a little bit easy to take. Um, I, I don't know. I just wish it was higher, higher proof for that stuff. All right, let's go to the next one. And this is for all you scotch heads out there because I saw this come across and I got very excited. Uh, boom, Ardbeg 25. Now, now this is going to arrive in the U.S. in early 2021. I don't know if anybody in the chat, Dustin, Matt, Steve A, you guys might know more of the, the release on this. Sometimes these hit the market early than they say. Um, this is a new permanent addition to the brand's portfolio. Uh, whiskey distilled in the 1990s, uh, was, which was, you know, the 1990s when very little whiskey was being produced before the distillery closed in 91. Uh, Full-time production resumed in 97 uh, when Glen Morangi Company purchased the distillery. So a quarter of a century in a cask. Bottled at 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, gunmetal bottle coupled with presentation box wrapped in a unique metal cage. Uh, a modern take on the brand's not work design. Only a few countries will see this release in late 2020, but a global launch is expected in early 2021. MSRP for this one, 850 bucks. Damn. See what you guys are saying in the chat. Looks amazing. No clue when it'll be on sh shelves, says Steve A. Uh, Ryan Turbier picked up the Maker's Private Select Pecan Pie flavor one. Oh, yeah, Ryan, I heard that was kind of the one everybody was chasing was Pecan Pie. So I got the other two because the stave combination just looked unique. So I grabbed those. Um, yeah, Adam, I agree. It is slick. I think it's a slick looking bottle. Um, 850. For that is less than I'd guess in Jason Coates. Um, Adam Dorman, Jason, thanks for your help. My liquor store lottery ended up getting the Old Forester 150th batch three. Super excited, drinking some ECBP tonight. Yeah, right with you, buddy. I have the batch one. Um, hey, focus up camera. There you go. 
Um, all right. Yeah, it looks awesome, but 825, it's that's going to be a hard sell for most people, you know, but it seems, and correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, anything Ardbeg, I feel like Ardbeg is like the Buffalo Trace of Scotch. Anything Ardbeg puts out just sells like this. Um, so, uh, so I agree here with Cameron. Old Ardbeg equals weak, weak peat should still be a beautiful dram. I mean, you would think, but if it's just really beautiful distillate, it could be something pretty amazing. Uh, all right, so something exciting also coming from uh, Castle and Key. So Castle and Key, a resurrected distillery. Marianne Eves, Marianne Barnes at the time took over, uh, was the master distiller, helped develop the bourbon, helped develop some rye whiskeys. She has moved on to other things, but we're around 20, let's see, it's 2020 now. Uh, and their first release from that distillery is coming out soon, and it's a rye. It's a restoration rye, uh, Kentucky Rye Whiskey. So this uh, release, uh, they so uh, Castle and Key is going to be putting out its first two whiskey batches from the distillery. Now that the distillery was founded in 2014, so each of these batches uses the same mash bill. So you have 63% rye, 20% malted barley, and 17% yellow corn. Um, so rye batch one was 60 barrels. Whiskey is bottled at 51.5% ABV. Uh, batch two is 57 barrels and bottled at 49.5% ABV. So they're going to be available as of this month in Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, South Carolina, Texas, and Georgia for $40 each. Um, they also released a vodka and a gin this week. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the new rye. Um, I think the label's kind of cool. Definitely sticks out. It's very, you know, modern-esque. It actually reminds me a little bit of a compass box label, which I think is interesting. Um, so, yeah. So, what do you guys think about that? Are you excited to finally taste the stuff from coming from compass box? Um, uh, I am. Oh, Andy O with a 20-ounce super chat. Awesome channel, my friend. Thank you so much, Andy. Appreciate that, buddy. Uh, how would this differ from the pinhook stuff? Well, I would think that this is more of a proprietary mash bill. Uh, you know, if I'm going to guess, Will, I think this is their own mash bill. Now, remember, this is 63 malted rye, 63 rye, not malted rye, I'm sorry, 20% malted barley. Then you have 17% corn, which is a similar mash bill to what we saw from Old Forester, where there's more rye than corn. So I would expect this, and this doesn't surprise me, to be a little bit more on the floral side maybe a little bit more citrusy, um, a little bit of spice, something very easy to sip on. Uh, but we'll see how it turns out. I could be completely wrong, but based on that mash bill, that's what I would guess. But you never know with yeast strains and barrel maturation, how it could all change. Uh, Will Zerk just came in. Cheers, I agree, Jason. Woodford Double Oak would be delicious. Did Ohio get all six flavors? I could not find pecan pie or pecan pie a la mode. Yeah, they were all, they were all there. Um, they're all in Ohio. Uh, like I said, uh, apparently pecan pie was the one that was gobbled up and searched out for the most. So, and we got one more release guy, one more release. It is the, I don't know if you'll be too excited. I'm actually pretty excited for this one because I kind of like where this uh, distillery is headed. Uh, and it's the George Dickel 15 year rye, uh, I'm sorry, not 15-year rye, 15-year Tennessee whiskey. I had rye on the brain. So this is going to be a new release from George Dickel, uh, obviously. But the 15-year age statement, I think, is what's really cool. And these are single barrels. Uh, so this is the proof and taste will vary from barrel to barrel, obviously. They will range from 40% ABV to as high as 52.3% ABV. Uh, now it says it's minimally filtered with little water added. Uh, so I'm guessing maybe sometimes when you're, I would expect with the George Dickel stuff, you have to add water maybe a little bit to, you know, help the flavor profile. Maybe that's what'll happen with some of these single barrels. Um, now businesses or liquor stores or any bourbon groups, uh, that do buy the barrel pick can pick the highest proof options, uh, that were matured on the top tiers of the warehouse. Additionally, they can add custom branding or messages to the bottle. This will be available initially in California, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, and Texas. 
Um, this actually uh, was as of November with more markets to follow in January. Guys, 60, a 15 year old whiskey, 60 bucks. You know, I'm not, I'm not too mad at that. Again, that's if you enjoy, you know, George Dickel. Um, I love the bottled and bond this year, as you've heard me talk about. It was, I think it's still going to hold on as my surprise whiskey of the year uh, this year because I did not expect that flavor profile to come out of a George Dickel bottle. And I thought it was really good. Um, it definitely didn't have that, you know, vitamin type aspect that we're all used to with, uh, with Dickel whiskey. Um, all right. I'm going to shut up now because it's time to taste Eagle Rare 17. So let me grab the stats here. Uh, so, all right. So I was right. 18 years, three months old, 101 proof. Um, it's not 17, it's 18. So I'm guessing we'll get some good maturation in there uh, as far as some oak presence. Uh, Aaron Williamson comes in. Uh, happy holidays. Uh, my brother, you just have to... You just, you just have to accept Dickel is different than the way it's, it is good or bad. Oh, I agree. Mike Meyer. <laughs> uh, is there an audio delay for anyone else? If you have an audio delay, just refresh the stream. Uh, that should help. That should help fix it. Uh, let's see. Whiskey Crusaders. Evil Rare is a queen above 18. Well, let's see. See how it goes here. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> uh, Nancy Fraley's talking to Richie Z. Now go get your vitamins. <laughs> Richie Z, if Nancy Fraley says get your vitamins, you better freaking get your vitamins. Okay. All right, it's going to clean up the, uh, the palate a little bit here. All right, here we go. All right, so just like last year's Eagle Rare 17, the, the nose on this is incredible. I mean, it's all brown sugar, just beautiful oak. It's that Buffalo Tracy, you know, sweet oak profile, but you could definitely taste or you can definitely smell the age, I should say, on here. I'm going to quote my buddy ADHD Whiskey, the world's best whiskey taster, blueberries. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of dark fruits going on in here, whether it be blueberries, raspberries. But just a ton of baking spices. A lot of cinnamon punching through here, some nutmeg. Very, you know, I guess, uh, um, appropriate for the holidays. I guess. Again, that Buffalo Trace, that that vanilla note, that really dense, super like concentrated vanilla. That brown sugar caramel. There is a little bit of a of a butterscotch note too that I'm picking up here. Try to whip a little more air into this. You might need 10 to 12 Benadryl after Dickel 15, <laughs> says Zach. Hey, what's up, Nick Lovin? So as we're talking just overall nose here, this is incredible on the nose. Um, everything you want, really, in a good Buffalo Trace bourbon. It's not overly spicy. It's definitely more sweet. But the difference on this one that you get is that really rich, uh, baking spice, dark fruit note, and also the, um, I think the vanilla, the amount of vanilla coming out of this glass is, it's a lot. But again, this was the, this was pretty much the neck pour. So as this opens up, I'm hoping to get some more out of it. So let's give it a taste. Cheers. Eagle Rest 17 2020, baby. Mm. Still going. Come on, finish. Come on, give me more. Give me more finish. 
Ah. <laughs> One more sip, and then we'll break it down here. Oh. Come on. All right. All right, so up front, again, oak. You get that sweet oak profile right up front on the very tip of your tongue. Again, with that huge burst of vanilla, all the dark fruits are there, your caramels, that butterscotch note. Right when this hits mid-palate, there's there's a there's a rye spice, there's a rye spiciness to it that I really like. Um, that gives it gives it a little bit more depth than you're used to with like regular Eagle Rare that you don't normally get. I think the proof definitely helps that. It just kind of brings it out a little bit. It's got this really nice mix of sweet and spice on the front and the mid palate. And it's kind of lingering on a little bit. Now, the finish on this isn't super long, not as long as you would like, but what's there is definitely some good oak presence. You're definitely going to get the oak on the back end. Um, you know, you would think something 18 years old, you would get maybe some leather notes, but I'm not really getting a lot of that. Not really getting a big leather punch here. Um, yeah, 101 proof, Dustin. Any any bacon forward bourbons? Uh, Nancy Fraley, I'd agree with you. I'd love to have that ER cast strength. I would, yeah, read my mind. Let's go for another sip, guys. Holy shit, 455 in the chat watching tonight, guys. This is a, a record for me. 459, thank you so much for tuning in tonight, guys. Uh, this is amazing. So um, I don't know if this is a Wild Turkey 17 killer, but, um, man, there there's definitely like a... Uh, like an old warehouse quality to it. If you've ever walked into a Rick house on a, on a bourbon tour and you know, you smell like those old like age barrels, that type of profile is on here, which I definitely love. Um, I think I'm liking this better than I thought I would. I don't know why I had a preconceived notion that I wasn't going to be too crazy about it. I, I do like it. Um, I did get a chance to try the George T stag 2020 this year. Uh, which is 130 proof uh, this year. So back to a, a, a nicer proof. And that thing was, you know, the usual stag, like cherry, like cherry bomb and vanilla and like cherry, like uh, cherry Garcia ice cream and all that good stuff. I, I still might like that over this, but this is pretty damn delicious. Um, I'm glad I own one. I, I'm, I can't wait to see how it opens up. I, I do wish there was more on the finish though than just like oak and you know some of those ultra age flavors. You know, some black pepper on the back end too. One more sip and we'll finish it out here. Keep feathering it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that means. Uh Ben Lagara, a little more for the broken bottle fun. Oh, thanks so much, Ben. Appreciate that, buddy. Um, so again, as this opens up, you'll get my full honest review probably next week on this one. Uh, but first impressions, it's a little bit more complex than I thought it would be, but I think overall it's still missing some complexity on the finish for me. That's, that's what I'll say about Eagle Rare 17 this year. Uh, but Hey, lucky I got a bottle. I'm not totally disappointed because I did pay retail for this, so it's not terrible. But, um, yeah, we'll see how it opens up, guys. Look for the full review next week. All right. Eagle Rare 17. Boom. I'm going to keep sipping on it, see how it changes. Cohen says that Eagle and Killing No Turkey 17. Yeah, I, I would probably agree with that. Uh, Mike Meyer, WLW and GTS are better. This year's GTS, I think I had a, I was, you know, I had that blind tasting 
And I think I liked it a little bit better than that. Um, from what I remember, I haven't had a chance to try the William Lee Weller this year. I don't know if I'll get a bottle of that this year. Uh, yeah, I was hoping to, but uh, we'll see. There's still a little time. Um, yep, classic Buffalo Trace, wonderful up front sweetness. This one with nice oak, but the finish. That's exactly what it is, D8 Silve, and that's exactly what I always say. It's just that's why I think William Lee Weller and, G and George T. Stagg are probably two of the most consistent releases from uh, from the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection when it comes to just, you know, well, up until two years ago, George T. Stagg, I think last year and the year before, kind of fell off a little bit, but only because the proof got so low. And that's not what I want. I want like a full proof, 130, between 130, 140 proof George T. Stagg. I mean, that's what we want. Um, but they were still very delicious, solid bourbons. I won't you know, I won't fault it for that. But, you know, I, I just think William Llewellyn and George T. Stagg always seem to be the stalwarts in that collection. Now, if you're a Rye fan, I wasn't too impressed. Anytime I've ever had a Thomas H. Handy, you know, it's very good. Not super impressed with it. Um, the Saz, uh, the Saz 18 are wonderful, but again, don't really see those too often. Uh, and then the Eagle Rare 17 is probably the biggest unicorn of them all. Uh, and again, this is the second year I've gotten to try it consecutively. And for me, it kind of fell the same way that Dustin just, um, you know, described it great up front, amazing balance, amazing sweetness on the mid palate. It just lacks on the finish. But again, I think that's Buffalo Trace's MO. That's what people love about Buffalo Trace. It's, you know, here we go. It's so fucking smooth. It's smooth because it's got no fucking finish on it. Sorry, I'm cursing now because I get pissed off. <laughs> uh, I hope that uh, WT17 gets better after a couple of weeks because all you're talking about how good it is doesn't make sense. There are dozens of other bottles a third of the price I'd rather drink. Um, hey, look, Andrew, I I can see what your point is on that. Um, I think a lot of people didn't like – the people that didn't like Wild Turkey 17 thought it was too much of an, uh, of an oak bomb and liked you know sweeter stuff. I'm just a huge fan of the wild turkey, that funkiness, the the oak bar, the, the the oak presence that was on it, along with the sweetness and the finish on it. I was in love with that bourbon. You know, that was just that's just me. A lot of people loved it for for just that reason, um, but I can see why you would say that. You know, uh, let's see here. Bourbon claws, Jason, you're the best of 2020. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, so are the other B tacks better? Um, I just, I just kind of went through them all. I still, my, my favorite still of all time is the William Lee Weller. I love that stuff. Uh, let's see. Don't forget. Well, love the wild Turkey. Yeah, me too, Nancy. Absolutely. Uh, favorite albums to drink good Brown to. Oh God. I've actually been listening to a lot of uh, Fleetwood Mac, actually, recently. Like, chilling here in the whiskey room, just listening to Fleetwood Mac, like old uh, like old school Fleetwood Mac and just sipping some bourbon. I don't know what, what it is about it. Yeah, don't forget, there was a neck pour. Finish may improve. Yeah, Vegas Art, that's why I wanted to crack it open tonight. We'll see if it does improve. I'm hoping it does. Sugar Kitty, you worked up. How about those skinny jeans? Don't get me fucking started on skinny jeans. It's the worst thing ever invented by man. <laughs> High West Midwinter, if you want some sweetness at a better price. Ah, Midwinter's Night's Dram for me is a great whiskey. It just never was like a mind blower to me. I'm sorry. It's good. It's sweet. It's easy to drink. But I think it really ends there. There's nothing to me that's overly special about it. Sorry. Hate to rain on anyone's Midwinter's Night's Dram Parade. Um, I will say this year's batch, though, it's getting better. Because Act 6 and Act 7 to me were solid but fell flat. It's getting better. Uh, so this year, I think, as, as High West puts their own juice and distillate into it and it gets older, I think it's getting there. I think it's getting better and better. Maybe down the line it'll get even, you know, even more gooder. I hope. Um, 
Yeah, Rare Bird. You can't see that's the problem. I had the early ones, which are so hard to beat. I mean, that had some really old juice in it. And the, the ones, you know, today just don't compare. It just tastes like grape juice once it opens up. I, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I love old school Fleetwood Mac. Also a big fan of Mick Fleetwood's drumming and the uh, John McVie rhythm set. Yeah, absolutely. Mick Fleetwood, I think, is a, you know, he always said he was never like the greatest drummer in the world. But, you know, I think he was, uh, he, had, he had some good skills. Definitely could keep a beat and uh, can, can kind of drive that. The, the drumming on for Fleetwood Mac was always very unique and also very uh, um, it was very distinctive sounding. So uh, let's see. Early Midwinter Night Train was MGP. I think it was actually, wasn't it like 17 or 18 year old like Barton juice that was in the early Midwinter's Night Strands? If I'm trying to remember correctly, if anyone wants to correct me on that, let me know. Um, yeah, no four gate or blue run. Uh, I haven't tried blue run, uh, but yeah, four gate, four gate is in here. Um, well, or foolproof, not worthy of any price over secondary. Prove me wrong out here at the mass and drum. Uh, I would agree with you. I would agree with you. Well, listen, well, or foolproof is still my favorite of the Weller lineup that they keep extending. Uh, but yeah, it's remember it's still six, seven, eight years old. We did bourbon. So it's, you know, it's nothing to, you know, go crazy over. People just go crazy because it's Buffalo Trace and it's got that big Weller on it. Uh, Barton and MGP. There you go. It was Barton and MGP. Thank you. Yeah, MGP and Barton Blend. There you go. Jason, what's your favorite Fleetwood Mac tune? The chain is mine. Uh, probably uh, Rhiannon. I love that song. Something about it. It's like haunting. I'd rather get Larceny Barrel Proof. Okay, Aiden Craig. That's a good segue. Uh, the Weller Full Proof sample I tried was so unbalanced. I don't get alcohol forward often, even in cast strength stuff, but that was alcohol forward. Some of them do come off as alcohol forward. I agree with you, Kenneth. All right, so let's kick off our uh, kind of our good, not so good. Let's go through the releases of 2020 a little bit. Now, I'm going to be sharing some of the ones that will be in my top 10, but you guys have heard me wax poetic about them all year. You guys probably pretty much know what my top 10 or pretty close what my top 10 will be. Maybe you don't, but we'll go through some of the uh, some of the different you know, releases. I have another sip of Eagle Rare 17 real quick. Uh, I coked out Mick Fleetwood drumming is entertaining. A look at some early footage. I agree. All you have to do is watch some of the old Fleetwood Mac, uh, like music videos and the dude's like drumming and like bugging his eyes out and just like making crazy faces. That guy was nuts. Um, 2020 GTS bringing it in number one for 2020. Um, so this is the thing. If, if I only had a sample of a bottle rather than, you know, being able to sit with the bottle and review it, you know, from beginning to end and spend some time with it, um, it's not going to be in my list. They'll, there's definitely going to be like a, um, like when I do my final video, there will definitely be like an honorable mention category for bourbons that I got to try that I thought, excuse me, were amazing, but didn't get a chance to try the full bottle. One of them will probably be the 2020 GTS. If I had a full bottle of that, that might've been up there in my top five. Uh, also, I would put up there King of Kentucky. I got to try a few samples this year. Dustin, uh, actually in the chat, helped me. Uh, he, he had me try some of his. Um, Dan Risto sent me some of his. If I had a full bottle of it, honestly, that might have been my number one bourbon of the year because that shit was ridiculous. Everything, everything. That bourbon had everything. It was that good. The King Kentuckys this year were fucking phenomenal. And if I had a full bottle of it, that might have been my number one. Um, plus, he likes Ocean Spray. Yes, <laughs> he's doing the Ocean Spray commercials. Um, okay, so let's start off with, um, let's see, what are we going to start off with here? 
So as we go through the um, the releases, uh, one of the first bottles I reviewed this year. We'll try to go through these pretty quick, guys. Uh, Booker's. Booker's Granny's Batch. So this was the first release of 2020 from Jim Beam and their Booker's line. And I, I hated it. <laughs> I did not like it at all. I was not a fan. Um, I skipped Boston's Batch, which I heard was a little better. I did buy the Pigskin Batch, which is the third release, um, just because I love football. That's the only reason why I bought it, not because I expected it to be anything amazing. And, it, and it's not. It's just a solid you know, batch of Booker's. Um, I think as we see Booker's now get into the $90, $100 price range, uh, for me, I think it's it's just going to be a little bit of a miss now for me uh, each year. That was definitely a miss. I think Booker's now, unless it's as good as Country Ham, Sip a While, and some of the other like epic releases. And I know they all can't be like that because they're batching them from all over the warehouse. But uh, to spend that kind of money, they all have to be epic. And just for me, they're just not anymore. So that was kind of a, you know, eh. Rossman Tarver, cheers, Jason, during the content, also the stream with my backyard distillery. Chattanooga whiskey the other day, drum on. Oh, absolutely, Rossman. Um, yeah, Chattanooga is, I, I love what they're doing. Can we get uh, Walter Gimanski full line retrospect video? If I had them all, you would. I just don't have them all. But maybe I could just talk about them. Um, Booker's is no longer on my shelf due to the price hike. And a lot of people feel like that. Hey, Trev Wilson's in the house. What's up, the wrench? Well, so Joseph Brazzers is here. Eric Waite is in the house. What's up, Eric? Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, all right. Uh, next up on the list here, the Elijah Craig Rye. You guys remember this one? The Elijah Craig Rye that released. Here it is. Here's your Elijah Craig Rye. 94 proof, 35 bucks. For me, this was a uh, on the fencer cuz you could have this is a take it or leave it whiskey in my opinion. It's a it's a love it or leave it. Uh because I'm not going to I'm not going to um while it wasn't very like it like it wasn't like a standout rye at the same time, you know, I mean look back, Heaven Hill did a lot of stuff with Elijah Craig this year. A lot of different Elijah Craig, you know, extensions came out, including the rye, which a lot of people forgot about because it kind of came and went very quickly. There wasn't a lot of this stuff. It didn't release in every state. It didn't, uh, it wasn't widely available, but at 35 bucks, you, I mean, you can't hate the price point. Um, I think for what it is, I think it was a hit, you know? Uh, well, I wouldn't say a hit. Like I said, I think I'm on the fencer about this. It's an on the fencer. It wasn't amazing, but I do love the price point. It was a good mixer, solid rye whiskey, but if you literally try this in a mix of like bourbons, you could literally, you might think this was a bourbon because it has such a barely rye influence on here. So um, yeah, it's okay. It, but I'm not gonna fault Heaven Hill for bringing out a $35 rye whiskey that's accessible. The only problem is they just didn't release enough of it. So I think that would probably fall more on the miss side for me. All right, now we're getting to another Heaven Hill product. And this one probably has some mixed reviews. I don't know if we're going to think what I think of this one. And this is the Larceny Barrel Proof. So the Larceny Barrel Proof, to me, all right, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this was a miss for me personally. Um, I did not like Batch A at all. I did not think it tasted like a weeder. I think it tasted like a, like an Elijah Craig barrel proof because it didn't taste like a weeder. Um, it was very heavy peanut, very heavy, like Cracker Jack caramel. I wanted that, you know, that, that fruit forward flavor that you get from a good weeded bourbon. The B batch to me was much better and, you know, more on the way. The C batch, I think was more in line with what the B batch was. Um, so for me on taste, I think it was a miss, but I think for the collective bourbon community, I think it was a hit because somebody brought up Weller Foolproof earlier. Um, there aren't a lot of Weller, there aren't a lot of cast strength weeded bourbons that are available on the market that are affordable. And Heaven Hill, I think, nailed it with the price point. 
60, 65 bucks. They probably could have charged more for it, but they didn't. Uh, they kept it at a good price point. A lot of people did enjoy it. For me, it wasn't my profile that I like in a weeder, but when it comes to an overall market addition, I was a fan. So that's kind of where I stand with Larceny uh, Barrel Proof. Um, all Stack Junior, all, all ECBP, all over all ECBP. Ah, Edward, I don't know. We'll get into Stag Junior this year. Um, let's see here. Keith Schmidt, I like Maker's Cast Strength for 50. Yeah, that's another one that's available on there. Um, ECBP over Larson and Barrel Proof. Eric, I would agree with you from that standpoint. All right, let's go down the list here. Let's see what else, what's, what we got next. What do we got next here? Um, oh, well, yeah. Keeping it, again, more Heaven Hill releases. The Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, I mean, these are hits every year. Really not much more to say about Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Every year these come out. They're a little bit different. They have a little bit of a different nuance in each and every batch, which makes people want to keep collecting them and get every single release each year. This is easily still a hit. And uh, I will say that the B batch this year um, and pretty much in the C batch together are in my top 10 this year because they were so damn good. I chose the B batch overall, uh, but the C batch, the more it opened up, the better it got. Um, those might take that. The B batch and the C batch might take like one slot in my top 10 this year because they were that good. Um, all right, let's go to. The Angels Envy Cellar Collection, the Tawny Port Finish. Now, I reviewed that a while ago with my buddy, um, uh, with my buddy Jim Shannon from the Bourbon Road. Uh, I actually really liked it. I liked the Tawny Port Finish on it. It had a really nice finish that you don't normally get from Angels Envy, but the price point was about two hundred fifty bucks. Um, everything that's Angels Envy usually tends to be pretty heavily priced, uh, which makes them usually a miss for me. This was no exception. I could appreciate what they did with the Tawny Port Cask using some older, um, you know, Tawny is usually a lot older than a Ruby Port Cask. Usually has some more depth to it, a little bit more flavor. Uh, and I think you can definitely taste that in the Angel's Envy release they did this year. But for me at $250, you know, it, it didn't warrant that type of price point. Um, Grayson, Makers 101, we'll get to that one for sure. Uh, next up are the Davies County bourbons releases. You guys remember these? Davies Counties. So I don't know if you guys remember these releases. So um, these came out. This was a, a, a basically a resurrected bourbon label that came out of Luxco. Um, so there were three different ones. You had a regular standard bourbon. Uh, you also had a Cabernet Sauvignon finish, and you also had a French oak uh, finish. Um, I thought before I got it that, they were going to, my favorite was going to be the French Open. Actually ended up being just a standard bourbon. Um, I just liked the spiciness of it. I liked the flavor profile. 40 bucks, I think it was good. Um, flavor profile for me, I think was a hit. But uh, when it comes to availability, you know, Luxco doesn't have the greatest reach just yet. Uh, so that part of it was kind of a miss for me. But, you know, solid release. I still think there's better stuff on the shelf than spending $40 on here. So probably lean more towards a miss for that for me. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Um, nope, nope. Didn't get to try that. Oh, here's, here's a couple. Um, where is that bottle? Wilderness Trail. Um, Rex Morgan, 999 Super Chat. Is Bartstown Discovery 3 worth $130? Um, for me, yes. Um, I said in my review, uh, there's, I'm trying to remember. Actually, do I have the... Do I have that bottle here? Oh, no, it's over there. Um, you have some, I don't know, remind me in the chat, guys, what is it, 12-year MGP? Then you have 10-year Heaven Hill, I think, in there. And then I think you have some Wild Turkey in there, too. All that stuff blended together is fucking amazing. It's a great blend. I love it. Uh, $130 for that type of aged whiskey in that bottle, I think, is right on. And it's an amazing blend. Love it. Um Aaron C. Let's see. Davis County is in Arizona. My beef with Davis County as a brand that's tied to geography. None of that just lets foot in Davis County except to be sold. Exactly. 
Um, again, this that's another example of a story selling a bourbon. And that's exactly what they did. I didn't when the French oak was a hit. Uh, yeah, I like the French oak the more and more it opened up. Uh, but it just took some time. 14-year uh, MGP, I think, in the three. I think you're right. Um, Discovery 3 will be hard to find soon. Yeah, I think so. If you see Discovery 3 anywhere, I would gobble it up because it's getting more popular as people keep trying it. Um, yeah, Davis County is an original. It's an original Kentucky brand. Uh, so, But they decided to re res uh, resurrect it. So next up is Wilderness Trail. This was the special release that they did. This was their first batch of six-year bourbon that they came out with. Um, bottled in bond, six years old. Now, while this didn't blow me away, I think it's just a testament to what, you know, when you compare this to their four-year stuff, you could just see where Wilderness Trail is going, their exceptional knowledge of yeast and maturation, using science to bring out the best flavors and everything. Very impressed with this. I think for me, anytime you see stuff getting older and, and more mature, it's a hit. This was a hit for me. I was a huge fan of the Wilderness Trail six year stuff. Um, man, once this, when this stuff keeps getting older, that eight year, 10 year, this shit's going to be phenomenal. I think uh, the weeded bourbon, the fact that you sweet mash, the fact that they're going in at a low entry proof, I mean, it's it's they're doing everything right. They're them and Peerless, I think, are really doing the right things when it comes to you know craft bourbons. I just wish Peerless would get cheaper already. Uh, let's see here. Had some source wilderness trail six years, and it is velvety. Yeah, it's got an amazing mouthfeel for what it is. I totally agree with that. Uh, Blood Oath Pack Six. So uh, this was the annual Blood Oath that comes out each year. Uh, again, from Luxco, they usually, you know, John Rempe usually puts together some crazy, like, finish to it. This was a cognac finish. This had some pretty ultra-aged, you know, whiskeys in here. Um, I believe it was, let's see, I think there was a 12 or 13 or 14-year uh, bourbon in here. Some of it was mellowed with cognac casks. And I was a huge fan of it. It there are some bourbons I had that were a little bit better than this, especially finished ones this year. Uh, but um, that's why it's on my fringe uh, blind tasting uh, tonight because we're going to see how good it gets, or if it's uh, is it does, do I feel like it's is better than I thought it was? For me, uh, this was a hit this year. Uh, last year was a miss. This year, this was a hit. I really enjoyed the cognac, uh, the cognac influence in this whiskey. This year. Uh, let's see. Fleetwood Mac. Yes, perfect sipping tunes. <laughs> uh, Woodenville Port Finish was very solid, only 45. Yeah, that was a good one, too. Uh, oh, let me go up, Keith. Sorry, buddy. About the Wilderness Trail. Dan Taylor, have you tried Angel's Envy Cast Rank this year? No, not yet. Uh, I was hoping to grab one here in Ohio this year. Uh, I usually skip it, but I was going to buy it. I heard great things about it. It's just one of those that are a little bit harder to get, unfortunately. Uh, Keith Schmidt, uh, I bought a four-year source ride today, Mike Drop from Wilderness Trail. It is excellent. Wow, Mike Drop sourced four-year from Wilderness Trail. That's interesting. Did not know that. Wow. Oh, Kenneth. Okay. Have you had the Beams Distillers Masterpiece of So versus Wild Turkey Revival? Uh, I still like the Revival better, but the Masterpiece was way better than I thought it was. It's like drinking peanut butter and jelly. You got that Jim Beam peanut characteristic with lace with some really nice sweet oak. You got all the fruit from the uh, from the sherry influence. I was I liked the, uh, the 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 Masterpiece a lot actually. Uh, Kentucky Owl Dry State, 100th Anniversary Edition. Now, you guys remember when I, when I tried that on a live stream a while back? Um, that's definitely a big miss. While I can appreciate the history and the crafting and the blending that went into that bottle, and I will say it was a very uh, nuanced and very complex 115-proof bourbon, to ask $1,000 for it, I think is um, – what's the word I should use here? 
asking a thousand dollars, sometimes up to twelve hundred. The highest I saw was fifteen hundred. Asking that for a bourbon of like that, I, I think was, do I say is irresponsible uh, a decent word? I just think that's it. Just that's fucking insane. That's ridiculous. I mean, now it's one thing if you're if you're on secondary, the secondary prices are all just ridiculous. But that was retail. That was retail. I mean, maybe it's not as bad as OFC, you know, being like two grand and the Woodford Reserve Baccarat being, wasn't that like a thousand or two thousand dollars too? I mean, just crazy prices. I just think for what it was, that's that was a big miss. And that was just, if that thing was more affordable and people could get their hands on it, uh, it came in a nice leather box and was a beautiful presentation. But to ask that amount of money for it was pretty insane. And I'll say the same thing about, you know, paying for, a, you know, a crystal bottle and all that shit. But I'm not drinking the bottle. So who gives a shit? Um, let's see. OFC is so much better than dry. So I would agree. I got to try OFC. And it definitely was. That was probably you talk about velvety whiskey. OFC was probably the most velvety whiskey I've tasted in a long time. That thing was just like. It was so mouth coating for what it was. Still not two thousand dollars good though. Um, all my favorites. Here we go, guys. You guys will like this. Blinds gold and straight from the barrel. Horsey time. It's horsey time, guys. Now, everybody, buckle up. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I did a I did a whole video on this, and you guys heard me kind of go off on it. Um, so. I'm not going to you know, really shit on Buffalo Trace here too much uh, because I do appreciate them bringing this to the market when there was so much demand for it. Everybody was screaming, why don't we have Blanton's Gold here in the U.S.? Why don't we have Straight from the Barrel here in the U.S.? Um, uh, and, you know, they did that. And I think just as consumers, we really can't keep up with the demand. And I think Bourbon Pursuit, when I was listening to them, they had a really good point saying that uh, I think the fact, though, that they brought this out during a trade war and during a pandemic uh, was a little bit tone deaf. Um, I think that, you know, plus the price points for these, it's literally cheaper to find one overseas and have it shipped here than buy it here at retail. Um, so I think the price points were definitely off. It came across as really just a money grab for Buffalo Trace and, and Sazerac, uh, which you know, of course, that's speculation. We don't really know that. But when you look at it from an overall lens, that's what it looks like. Um, you're bringing these you're bringing these two to the market in like the worst times possible with the highest demand for this shit. I mean, people just go ape shit over blends. And I, I still can't understand it, but they do. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's um, I think the gold does have the consensus consensus of being most people's favorite uh, version of Blanton's. I happen to like the straight from the barrel. It's like a little bit more oaky, but I like the higher proof punch. But I could see why people love that, this gold, because it's it tastes like a Christmas cookie to me. It's so sweet. There's so much vanilla to it. It's got good, you know, good proof, good spice to it. Um, but I don't know. I just think these both were big misses. Uh, and plus, you know, once they hit the U.S., they made this big announcement and nobody ever saw it. Nobody ever saw it. And when you did see it, it was on secondary for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So, you know, nice try, Buffalo Trace. But this just had all the PR and the, and the like I said, like the, just the, the wrong tone to it when you brought it out. You know, and I wish there was more. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to kill Buffalo Trace completely because the demand for Blanton's is insane. I don't know how they could keep up with it. Honestly, people keep buying the shit like it's, you know, like they're giving it out like it's the last whiskey on earth. Um, you know, so I can't, you can't completely blame, you know, Buffalo Trace. Plus the distributors play a big part. You want to bottle Blanton's Gold, you got to buy, you know, 15 cases of Fireball and Wheatley Vodka and, uh, you know, peanut butter whiskey and a bunch of other shit before I give you a bottle of that. So, Ah, it's all fucking rigged. 
Bring me my horsey. Here it comes. <laughs> Danny Lynn says, nope, I found the gold for retail. Lucky you. That's good. Yeah, nice try. <laughs> Bring me my horsey. Uh, you ain't drinking the bottle. That's right. Buffalo Trace equals fail. Fail. Yep. One store here got one bottle of Blanton's gold. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Holy shit, we got 520 in the chat. This is amazing. Uh, okay, E.H. Taylor, 18-year marriage. Uh, that's another one. Now, I got to review that this year. Um, and I got to say, I loved it. Uh, but again, it's very typical. It was very typical Buffalo Trace. That tasted like drinking a bottle of Swedish fish candy. It was super sweet. It was super candy. It had the fruitiness. It had a little bit of rye spice and not much of a finish. Uh, very typical Buffalo Trace. I would have loved the bottle at retail, but unfortunately, you're just not going to find it for that. But um, if you're just going off of just the juice inside for a special release, I thought that was a hit. I really liked the Colonel Taylor 18-year marriage. Um, but not for the prices that people were asking because that was it was just got insane, just like every other Colonel Taylor, you know, release that comes out. I swear they could bring out a, a, a whiskey, a Colonel Taylor release that says, you know, 18 year uh, aged with Colonel Taylor's old fucking underwear and people would pay thousands of dollars for it. I'm just saying that's that's where we are with Colonel Taylor and Buffalo Trace stuff. And you know, kudos to Buffalo Trace. They've they've driven up demand and have a have a have a marketing team and have a business model that every that every distillery should be copying. Honestly, E. H. Taylor twenty twenty Survivor. Yes, ADHD whiskey. Right, COVID edition. Could you see that? I mean, it could happen. You never know with Buffalo Trace. Yeah, old underwear, old underwear, aged in old underwear. Colonel Taylor's. Hold on, or his socks. It's gonna throw it in a barrel, let it age, let it stew, bottle it, and sell on the secondary for four grand. Mark my words. Uh, all right, next up, Knob Creek 15. Where is that shit bottle? This was a huge miss to me. Huge miss. Hated it. Why is it so low? Because I've given it to everybody to get rid of it. Um this was a oaky, nasty mess. Now, I know D.H. Silva in the chat. He's going to come across the chat very soon and say I completely disagree because his bottle was amazing. Um, but, I, I again, I brought this up with this with this bottle, and I've, I've heard there was a lot of um, batch. Remember, this was batched. So I heard there was a lot of uh, batch inconsistency with the Knob Creek 15, some some people that had this said it was incredibly sweet and delicious. And then some people that had it said it was an oaky, drying, nasty mess. Uh, mine was the latter. Uh, so I hated this release. Um, so this was a huge miss for me. Sorry, Jim Beam. I hated it. <laughs> Hank Butts. Yes. The Knob Creek 12 for me. Huge hit. Love this. Love this release. Um, did I, did I um, you know, kind of get a little bit sad because I thought this kind of meant the, you know, kind of the end of the ultra-aged barrel picks that we're seeing? Um, and I think that that is coming. Uh, the last few picks I've seen from the single barrels have been nine years old. There's still some 15-year filter, uh, you know, kind of dropping around out there. But the 12 to me was a... And absolutely, it was like a perfect balance of oak, sweet, spice, everything you love about Jim Beam. This was a huge hit to me. I love the 12. Stanley Wagner. When you get done, check out IG. I made something for you. Wagdog 14. Okay. <laughs> Drink plenty of water. KC12 is where it's at. I, I agree. Knob 15 for mixers only. There's, there's no way that that Knob Creek 15 100 proof was better than any Knob Creek 15 store pick that you could find somewhere. So I'm sorry. I'm going to have some more Eagle Rare 17. Let's see how it's getting. It's getting better here. Ooh, it's opening up nicely. But I'm getting more nuanced flavors in the front and the mid palate. Not so much to finish quite yet. Give it some time. All right. 
Next up, where where is she? Old Tub, another Beam product. You guys remember Old Tub? This is like drinking peanuts, Cracker Jacks, a little bit of chocolate mixed in. Uh, the price point was amazing on this, like 23 bucks for this bottle. I mean, this was a huge hit to me. A lot of people did not like this because they just thought it was like cheap, you know, Jim Beam swill, uh, which, you know, if you're not a fan of the Jim Beam profile, maybe. But I think overall, it's just an addition to the to the whiskey universe. Anything that's 23 bucks, non-chill filtered, 100, and pr 100 proof. Come on. That's, that's a win in my opinion, hands down. Uh, yeah, Jif in liquid form, exactly, the Desert Fox. I agree. For 23 bucks, Amy says, Old Tub is the shizzle. Yeah. Hey, Whiskey Crusaders is here. What is up? Oh, I said hi to you. I'm thinking Whiskey Central. Sorry. I thought Shayla was in the house. Uh, it's okay. I still love you too, Matt. <laughs> Old Tub in Austin around 18 or so. Oh, wow. 18 bucks? What? Oh, my God. ADHD Whiskey. If you guys caught his, uh, his advent calendar video today, his beard is literally covered in glitter. Dude. ADHD whiskey, I got to know how long did it take you to get all that shit out of your beard or is it still in there? I got to know because that shit was epic. I thought like the, the thumbnail was like you did some like, like you photoshopped it. And then when I watched the video, the glitter was literally full in your beard. I fucking lost my shit when I saw it. Uh, but oh my God, dude, is this still in your beard? There's got to be glitter still in your beard. I hate it. Uh, OGD 114 all day, baby. I think I would still lean towards OGD 114 over this for sure. But I still appreciate it. it's non chill filtered, 100 proof. And it's like I said, it's just like peanut butter goodness if you like the beam profile. So for me, that was a hit. Uh, Wild Turkey Masters Keep 17 Bottle and Bond. You guys know I love that one. That's definitely going to be in my top 10 this year. Uh, for sure, where it falls, you'll have to find out when. Uh, let's go to another Wild Turkey release. Uh, Wild Turkey Rare Breed, Rye. Uh, Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye, to me, was a hit. I love the Rye. I love the Rare Breed Rye. Um, is it the most complex thing in the world? Nope. Um, is it, you know, does it have everything you look for in a Rye? Probably not. But for what it is... Is a non-chill filtered rye whiskey from one of the best distilleries in the land, which smells very sweet on the nose and then kicks you in the teeth with 112.2 proof of non-chill filtered rye goodness. Um, the only thing I wish with this one, right now it's a hit for me, but I think it could have been a more of a hit if it was just more available. I, I just feel like, I don't know if they just didn't make enough of it or everyone just gobbled it up pun intended, <laughs> gobbled it up as quickly as possible, but I absolutely love this stuff. Uh, but again, I love Turkey. I love their rye profile as well. So, uh, yeah, I love wild Turkey rare breed. Uh, where's ADHD whiskey says it came out pretty easily in the shower. Thank goodness. The mess on the floor was terrible. I can imagine dude. Uh, wild Turkey one-on-one -on -one rye is so much better. Um, Wild Turkey one on one rye, Kelsey Dime. Okay, I could, I mean, it's pretty close. That's one I still want to try. Rare Breed Rye is a rock star. Um, Rare Breed Rye was a lemon pepper bomb to me, and not much else as a Wild Turkey fan, not too big on it. I think that's what a lot of people felt like. It wasn't, you know, like if you're a fan of Russell's Reserve single barrel rye, which is way more complex than what the Rare Breed Rye is, uh, in my opinion then yeah, I, I could see the rare breed rye coming off as eh uh, or as not as like nuanced as you would like. But, you know, but again, because that's my only bottle of rare breed rye, yeah, I drink Wild Turkey 101 rye all the time and use it as a mixer all the time. So, uh, Master Drum, I got a sample of the rare breed rye and it was very nice. Only wish I could get rare breed rye in my area more often. I think we all do. Yeah, I, that's the problem. I think now nobody can really find it enough, unfortunately. All right. Uh, 
Yellowstone 2020 limited edition. Now, this is one I didn't review because I couldn't get a bottle of it. I had an opportunity to, but I had tried it and I wasn't a fan. Um, it was a little bit of a mix. It was a little bit of a miss for me. The Yellowstone 2020 limited release was a 100 proof, 101 proof uh, bourbon that was finished in Armagnac casks, but it was only seven years old. Uh, so to me, the age of the bourbon kind of took over what the Armagnac brought to the table. Usually the Armagnac could hide some of that youth to it, but to me, it just, it was, it, I don't know. The Armagnac got lost with the youth of that whiskey to me. It just wasn't enough going on. Unfortunately, I wasn't a fan of that one. So I would say for me, that one was a miss. Um, oh, here's a polarizing one. Eliza Craig toasted. All right, guys in the chat. What are you, uh, I'm just going to take a quick poll. What do you think right off the bat for, for this, for Eliza Craig toasted fan, not a fan to me. I'm still on the fence about this one. I did not like it at first. It has opened up halfway and I have liked it more. So I think this is like one of those bottles to me that was, this isn't on the fencer. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. Uh, I thought it had a really weird aftertaste to me. I wasn't really crazy about it, but that kind of went away as it opened up and it became more marshmallow and more like that s'mores, like that graham cracker uh, flavor to it, which I loved. So maybe it was a miss for me at full level, uh, but halfway down, it became more of a hit. <laughs> so let's keep it at that. But again, this was another, another line extension for Elijah Craig uh, from Heaven Hill. They did make it pretty affordable, about 50, 60 bucks, which wasn't bad for a toasted bourbon. But again, this was very heavily allocated. Not a lot of people got to, you know, see this, unfortunately. But maybe there's more to come in the, in the years to, you know, follow here. Deborah Cohen, I love the nose better than the taste. That was basically my first initial reaction. Uh, Michael Chinkar says, big fan. Got mine for MSRP, loved it. Okay. Uh... Peter says, hardly showed up in Connecticut, never tried. Yeah, a lot of people not, you know, really didn't get a good chance to, you know, to, to try it all. Um, all right. King of, King of Kentucky 2020, I already talked about. That could have been my bourbon of the year if I actually got a bottle of that. It was that good. Old Forester birthday bourbon 2020. Miss. Hard miss for me this year. Was not a fan. Uh, it was only... What was it? Nine years old this year? Ten years old? Ten years old. Ten years old this year. Um, 98 proof. Heavily allocated. And you guys know I love me some, you know, some old Forrester. I love Jackie Zykin. But that old Forrester birthday bourbon to me was a huge miss. It was a very different profile. It was very tropical to me. It came off very coconut forward. Not a lot of people picked that up on it. I don't think like when I was watching other reviews, um, it had a nice spice to it, but I thought it was very, it came off very tropical to me. Um, and while I, 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 I liked it for its uniqueness, I had way better stuff this year that was more available and a lot cheaper. So to me, it was a miss this year. Um, yeah, I was, I was freaking out when I saw this too. People were paying 600, 700, $800 for it. I just, you know, Old Forest Birthday Room was not good. Friend gave me a blind sample. Thought it was Eagle Rare. Uh, thought 20 was better than 19. See, I love 19. I thought 19 was incredible. Uh, I still think 18 is my favorite, the 12 year. Uh, whiskey definitely tastes better at MSRP, that's for sure. Uh, Little Book Chapter 4, which I have here. Um, this, uh, this for me, I think was a, I had to keep going back to this bottle. It changed a lot over time uh, with that brown rice bourbon in it. The, the thing that I thought the little book this year lost a little bit was the age. It came across very youthful, um, very sweet, very easy, not too complex. I mean, you compare it to the beast that was little book uh, chapter three, the road home with all the cast strength, small batch stuff. In single barrel form or blended together. That thing was a beast. The follow up with this was kind of a miss for me, but I know some people did enjoy this one. It just, it missed the mark for me. 
uh, this year. Unfortunately, I only grabbed one of them. Usually, I, I the road home last year is I bought a couple because I loved it so much. Um, so, yeah, little book was disappointing this year. I agree. Uh, Parker's Heritage, this baby right here, the heavy char ten year, big, big, big hit for me. This definitely snuck into my top ten. Uh, I thought the rye last year was okay. The bourbon this year, I love this shit. It's, I think it's delicious. Uh, now, I will say when they say heavy char, heavy char, you, you have to take a little bit of a grain of salt because heavy char is – this is a char level five. Um, so when you think heavy char, you think like what Old Forester does with their 1910 barrels – when they incinerate those things to, you know, barely the wood is hanging them together because they incinerate it so much. This is just basically a, a char five, which is still, yes, it's a heavy char, but remember the normal going rate, you know, in, you know, in bourbon is usually a char four. So to go to five wasn't a huge leap, you know? So, you know, when you're, when you're kind of talking about that, but there is definitely some good oak influence in here. I love how it's opening up. It's getting better and better. It's spicy. Um, you definitely taste the oak influence, and I love this release. Easily the best, my favorite Parker's Heritage that I've had. Um, so I'm glad I chose this year to actually get it. Yeah, let's let's call it uh, let, let's call it like you know well done, like a well done barrel. <laughs> uh, okay, Stag Junior Batch 14. Stag Junior Batch 14 this year. Uh, now, I, I, I guess I'll say that's a hit. I mean, a lot of people love that one. For me, it was a miss because I was comparing it to Batch 12, which I love so much, and Batch 13, which was a close, you know, close to 12. Uh, but 14 for me, it was just it was just a very good, solid batch of Stag Junior. Uh, I didn't think it was anything special or anything that stood out like Batch 12 did. But, you know, still good. I think I have to sit on the fencer for me. Uh, let's see. I didn't get to try Blue Run. Um, I didn't get to try the old Fitz 14, unfortunately. I do love that stuff. Uh, let's see. What else here? Oh, Elijah Craig 18. I finally got to try the 18 this year. Uh, where is that? Oh, here it is. <clears throat> So this for me, a uh, huge miss. I spent the money on this. I was really excited to finally get one and try one this year. Did not like it. This was an oaky mess. Uh, it's only 90 proof. So they really kind of watered down all the good flavor that's in here uh, that I like, especially in a you know an ultra-aged bourbon. It just didn't do it for me. Uh, I would not buy another one of these unless I know that the specific – now remember, these are single barrels. So unless I know that the single barrel on this bottle is an epic bottle or an epic barrel, I will not be buying that again. Uh, Bullet Bourbon Blender Select. Remember this one? This is the special release um, coming out of Bullet. This is basically Four Roses uh, juice that they had. You know, they have a lot of Four Roses stocks that they were using when they were uh, sourcing. Uh, they took a bunch of different... Um, uh, some different, so master distiller Ebony Major, she basically took some different recipes, blended them together. This was one that I wasn't a huge fan of at first, but grew on me. Um, so much to the point where I got a second bottle because I loved it so much. Uh, this one, not good enough to crack my top 10, but definitely a very good release. I love what they're blending and I, I, I want to see more. So uh, I was, this was a, this was a miss for me at first, but became a hit. So here you go. Uh, Sam Houston 14 and Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered on my top five. All right, yeah, let's talk about those next. So Smoke Wagon this year. Um, now, this is a private select, but I think I have their Uncut Unfiltered here. Yeah, here we or is this, Oh, no, that's the small match. Where's the Uncut? Um, is this it? Ah, here it is. So Smoke Wagon. So these three bottles, um, these are one of my favorite new uh, blenders. Uh, I love what they're doing. I love what Alex is doing over at Smoke Wagon. I love the fact that he takes some different MGP, 
barrels, different ages, blends them together to make something a little bit unique and balanced. Uh, love it. So Smoke Wagon is definitely up there. A big hit for me. All the way down to the bottle design, the wax, the two guns. I mean, I love it. Smoke Wagon is freaking... If you guys haven't followed uh, them on Instagram quite yet, please do. Because on Instagram, Alec puts out some really great videos. He literally shows you what he's blending. It's amazing. Uh, hey, Ernie Brubaker. Just, hey, we got a live review. Castle and Key Restoration Rye is solid. Okay. I could take that. I'm sorry, Aaron. I'm sorry, Aaron. What did I say, Alex? Yeah, I'm sorry. Aaron Chepanik from uh, from uh, Smoke Wagon. My bad. Uh, okay. Got through that. Got through that. Oh, yeah. The, the Sam Houston, uh, which I have around somewhere. But let me see. Is it down there? Yeah, I think it's all the way down there. Sam Houston 14. What can I say? That's I think that might crack my top 10 this year, the Sam Houston 14. Now, I know they were different across different states, but the one I tried personally was amazing. Uh, a 14-year-old bourbon at 100, uh, excuse me, at $130 for the price. I thought that was a huge hit. Um, again, that's that's Barton Distillate. Again, that's also being blended by the team over at Bartstown Bourbon Company uh, to be put out in different states. Again, just and just shows you if you know how to blend whiskeys, you're gonna you you could you know really make some great whiskey. You just have to know how to blend. If Nancy Fraley's still in the chat, she definitely knows. She definitely knows how to freaking blend. Uh, maybe I'm vanilla in this regard, but I tend to prefer char number three and four depending on what I'm making. Oh, so that's interesting, Nancy. So, well, Nancy, have you ever done anything with a five char or higher? I'm just curious what your experience was. Um, is it a huge difference? Do you, do you really get more of a chocolatey and that oak char that, that, that comes through? Uh, pros, cons, what do you think? That's right, I'm putting Nancy Fraley on the spot, guys. Four Roses LE, Tim Gorgeous. I didn't get to try it this year. I Usually I get that bottle every year. I go wait online to get it. Uh, but I do have a sample coming to me this year. Uh, so hopefully that'll be here by the next live stream and we'll try it. Maybe we'll put it against some other heavy hitters to see how it does. Um, someone who can get Blanton's at retail, hit me up on Facebook. <laughs> Dude, watch those scammers. Just be careful. I, I don't, you know, guys that, that reach out to you randomly, I had a guy reach out to me on, uh, on Facebook or was it Instagram? I forgot what it was. And he basically goes, Hey, you're looking for a 2020 four roses LE. He's like, I, I got one for you. I'm like, Oh, for, for how much? He goes, I could sell it to you for retail. I'm like, okay, great. I'm like, you have a picture of it? He goes, yeah, sure. What does he send me? He sends me the, the media shots. Like he just sends me the media. I'm like, dude, those are the media shots. You have an actual bottle. Uh, no, but I could get one. Okay. All right. Next week he gets back to me. Uh, I have the four roses for you. Okay. Show me a picture of it. He takes a picture of his lineup. He has basically the small batch, the small, uh, the, the small batch select, and then an LE from like three years ago. He's like, yeah, that's the LE that you want. I'm like, no, that's a 20, that's the 2018. You have a 2020. Uh, yeah, just be careful with those guys, honestly. Uh, JG, have you tried anything from Stranahan's or Laws? Uh, yeah, I have. I, I do like them. Um, I love Stranahan's with, you know, I, I, I think they're, they're, most of their stuff to me just comes off as very apple cinnamon, which I think is delicious for an American single malt. Uh, the Laws stuff I've tasted a lot less. They do some funky finishes. Um, there's definitely some youth in that whiskey. It's very like root beery to me. Uh, I'm curious to see how that stuff gets as it gets older. Um, let's see here. Okay. Discovery series. So Bartstown Bourbon Discovery three, again, big hit that might crack my top 10. Uh, the benchmark, the new benchmarks. Now I did a video where I got to try every single benchmark. I have all of them over there still. Yeah, so those are the ones that were the top floor, the single barrel, the small batch, the bottled and bond, 
um, all the all the different benchmark, the re-release of the of the brand. Uh, the problem is it was Sazerac, and problem is is that not enough of it went out. Um, the the single barrel and the bottled and bond were actually really solid for twenty something dollar bourbons. Um, those two I think were hits. The rest of the lineup for me were misses, and the fact that it wasn't really too available makes it even more of a miss. So if those if that lineup became more available, I think you would have some really good solid bourbons for a good like some great bottom shelfers. Because that bottled and bond and that uh, and that single barrel were really good from the new lineup. All right, so Wise Guy Whiskey Guy. So this is the thing. I thought I was going to love two over three, but I think the MGP put the three over the two for me when I did it blind. There was just something about it. The spiciness of it just took over the two for me. Uh, Discovery Series 4 just released last Friday. Let us know your thoughts. Oh, I have to try to get some of that. I haven't seen it yet. All right, so benchmark. All right, we're coming down to the to the end here, guys. I'm trying to go through everything I can. Um, I didn't get to try the new Heaven Hill 13-year anniversary. I haven't even seen that yet. Uh, I heard it's great, but $300 is a lot to ask for that. Uh, oh, yeah, the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Proof Rye. I have a bottle. I got a bottle, guys. I haven't cracked it open yet. I'm going to be doing a review next week along with the Evil Rare 17. So it'll be a big, big uh, week next week. Um, so that'll be that'll be fun. Um, oh, Maker's Mark. So Maker's Mark released their 2020 save. I was uh, I really like this one. Um, I really like the Chattanooga Whiskey 111, a really st a good standout. Yeah, me too. I loved it. Maker's Mark. Uh, this one I thought was a hit. I really loved it. It was like butter pecan. It was butter pecan, butter pecan in a bottle. I like the RC6, I think, a little bit better. I think it was a little bit more nuanced and flavored with the fruit flavors. But I think this, for what it was, was a hit. I mean, I like what Makers is doing. I wish they would rename their labels, though. This SC4, PR5, you know, MC6, RP1, you know, I don't want to talk. I don't want to try to think of a, of a freaking, you know, like – like a nuclear silo code when I'm trying to think of a name of a fucking whiskey, like just name it something like you do with the picks. Like this is called bread pudding. Like I would love that. They should have named that butter pecan. I'm just saying makers. Come on, get your marketing game together. Uh, all right. So huge miss for me. Very old St. Nick number 12. Did not like this at all. Huge miss. Big waste of $250. Probably my most regrettable purchase this year. Um, what else? I think I've gotten through everything. Uh, four gates, four gate batch six and batch nine this year were amazing. Uh, batch six, I think overall was amazing. That might make my top 10 this year. Uh, batch nine. I haven't had enough time to, you know, spend some time with it. That one's really good too. Um, it's hard to find lots of these whiskeys in Iowa. Let's see. Old charter. Um, the old Overholt 11 year rye that was exclusive to Ohio. That was a miss. Um, Russell's reserve 2003. A lot of people asked me about that one cause that hit Ohio this week. Um, I was lucky enough to get a bottle a couple weeks back or like last month, maybe God, it's been that long. Um, that one for me was, uh, probably a miss just because of the price point on it. It's listen, it's, it's very, the problem is only it's only 89 and a half proof. So you lost that like big punch of flavor, but it's probably the most complex 89 proof whiskey I've ever had. But for 250, I don't know. You just felt like you wanted more from a barrel proofer, unfortunately. Um, and I think that's where I'm going to end it guys. Very old St. Nick. Oh, Weller single barrel. Yeah. That's just a miss because nobody saw it. So fuck that. Um, I think that's it. I think I covered everything that I could think of. Oh, the Michter's 10-year. Eh. Michter's 10-year for me are not that amazing anymore. I used to covet them. I used to chase them. But the Michter's 10-year uh, single barrels, they haven't. I haven't had one that's blown me away in a long time. The Michter's 10-year rye, though, however, this bottle – Um. 
was really fucking good this year. This was awesome. That's going to definitely be my top rise this year. Um, and also, oh wait, how can I forget about Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend? The Batch 25 in particular, and I'm not saying this just because Nancy Fraley's in the chat, but Batch 25, the pirate cask it's called, that's going to be in my top 10, I think. That's easily one of the most unique and delicious bourbons I've ever had. It, it starts off like savory and herbal, and then it goes tropical and like gives you like this sugary sweet like rum finish on it. It's amazing. Uh, if any of you guys have tried the Joseph Magnus 25, it's incredible. So that's going to be up there too. All right. All right, guys. So what are we going to do here? Oh, blind tasting time. We're going to do a quick blind tasting. We're going to find out if any of these four bourbons are going to make it and crack the top 10 possibly. And then from there, we're going to give away our two bottles tonight and then call it a night, guys. Thanks for hanging out tonight. We had about 500 people in the chat, a little bit over. It was amazing. Um, oh, the Mictus Toasted Barrel Rye. Yeah, that's going to be up there. I did love the Toasted Barrel Rye this year. Um, it seems to be always pretty damn good. Uh, I do love the Toasted Barrel Rye, especially love it with a cigar. There's something about that whiskey that just goes amazing with cigars, and I freaking love it. So, All right. So for you guys that don't know, in this blind tasting, we have some like on-the-fence bourbons that might crack my top five. Might get some, uh, might get more of a uh, of an honorable mention. I I just needed to kind of taste these together to see where they fall. So I have the Remus, uh, the George Remus Repeal Batch Number Four is in here. The Old Forester 150th Anniversary Batch Number One. Uh, the Colonel Taylor Barrel Proof for 2020 is in here, uh, and also the and lastly we have the Blood Oath Pack Six, which was the cognac finish. So. Nathan Pratt, thanks for hosting. Absolutely. Oh, Ashton Salts, thoughts on Box Sugar Elf Founders. I, I didn't get a chance to try that this year. Um, I I couldn't, you know, I couldn't go to Kentucky at the time to try to get one. Um, it was very limited. I think my buddy Dustin in the in the chat, uh, maybe I'll get a chance to try it. I know he got a bottle. Uh, he was pretty impressed with it, so we'll see. Jason, where did you get your charcuterie bourbon board done? Oh, this was made to me, made for uh, for me from uh, the Columbus Barrel Company here in Ohio. You can look up Columbus Barrel Company. They make my hats. They make this. They make. I got my barrel from them. It's a Jim Beam barrel. They made that barrel too, which is a half Buffalo Trace barrel, and they also made that Master and Drum barrel head. So, all right, let's get some water here. Uh, Kelsey Dime, Doc Swinson 15 year release thoughts. I actually got to try that. Uh, so thanks for reminding me. I loved it. It's, it's heaven Hill from what I understand. Um, and I thought it was delicious. I thought it was pretty damn good. It's pricey. It's pricey, but I thought it was solid bourbon. Thanks for checking in, Justin prescription bourbon in the house. Love the content. Keep it coming. Pre prescription bourbon guys, brand new channel. Go check them out. Oh, Video Eagle, has anyone tried Belfour? Uh, Video Eagle, if, if Scott from my bourbon journey is in the chat, ask him. He got to try it on his uh, – he actually had Eddie the Eagle on the, the, the live stream, and it was pretty cool. All right, so this is super fruity on the nose. Wow, a lot of fruit, actually. A lot of raspberries, strawberries here. Hmm. There's a little like a maple syrup aspect to it. Some good spice. And the nose on that one's pretty stellar. All right, let's go here. Uh, this one's more citrusy. A little more vanilla punch here. Maybe a little cherry too. Again, good vanillas, good caramels, has some good depth to it. Oh, yeah, how can I forget uh, the Labaud, Chateau de Labaud from Bardstown Bourbon Company? 
this this uh, this bottle is was ridiculously amazing this year. A huge hit, huge hit in my book. This is twelve year old MGP finished in Armagnac casks, and it's incredible. Um, yeah, I can't say enough about that one. That's definitely in my top ten this year. You guys, I'm sure you know that. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Jephthah, Jephthah was close. Jephthah was close. <laughs> I'm I'm curious. I want to try some of Jephthah's newer batches to see if they've gotten any better. I don't know. I'm curious. Yeah, this one's more citrusy, more cherry, more vanilla forward. Let's go here. Hmm. Well, this one's coming off a little bit. Oh, that might be the cognac finish. It's coming off like cherry and grapey almost. Maybe that's the blood oath. But there's a good oak influence in here. You can definitely tell that there's, I mean, there's good age in most of these. Um, the old forester isn't that old though. Uh, the old foresters are about seven or eight year old bourbon, uh, six, seven, eight year old bourbon in a heat cycled warehouse and makes it feel more like nine or 10 years old. Hmm. I love the nose on this one. This one definitely goes more on the line. I think of some uh, of there's like a grape fruit, definitely some some oak in there, definitely some like rich caramels. You got the vanillas in there, all kind of working together. Probably the most interesting nose out of all of them. Number one actually has a really nice nose though too. All right, let's go to this one. Oh, this is. This is just fried apple pie. Oh, man. Fried apple pie on the nose. Powdered sugar. That's super sweet. Some oak influence, not a lot. A lot of vanilla. Man, the apple cinnamon note coming through here is insane. I was, we were talking about Stranahan's earlier. You would think it was a uh, uh, Stranahan's. Jesus. Uh, Master Drum, when you drop 169 on the Swinsons, uh, brr, 169. I mean, I don't know. It's a 15 year old bourbon. So 169 isn't awful. Um, it's, I mean, you're looking at less than 200. If you're a huge fan of Heaven Hill, ultra-aged Heaven Hill, especially at Barrel Proof, then, yeah, go for it. I, I thought it was great. Now, I don't know if there's variations from batch to batch. You know, I, I'm not – I only got to try a sample of it. I'm not sure what the bottle details are, but I enjoyed it. Yes, Apple Drake's Cakes. Yeah, like an apple fritter. But a lot of powdered sugar, too. It's so sweet. But there's definitely some proof in there, too. That might be the highest proof out of all of them, which might make me lean to thinking, listen, usually I get fried apple pie. I'm thinking Colonel Taylor, but we'll see how it goes. All right, let's try number one. Uh, if anyone is going to be getting into the, the last minute to get into the bourbon bottles for to the giveaway tonight, get your super chats in. DC is keeping track. Uh, he'll throw your names in a, in a randomizer, and we'll go from there. Uh, the base of urban. Thank you for always putting out amazing content. Jeff, the Cree looks really cool driving past it based on these comments. Glad we did. <laughs> Listen, Jeff, the Creed, the people that are there are amazing. It's the great family. Just not a fan of their whiskey yet. I still have hope for them now. Yeah, the same as the whiskey drummer. So that's like that weird, like seventy-eight and a half percent corn mash bill, which also could be Beam too. So it, it it could be Beam or Heaven Hill. So if you're a fan of like that nuttier flavor profile, you're gonna love the Doc Swinsons. So how do you enter for the super chat? Um, you gotta click the little dollar sign in the bottom of the chat, of the bottom right of the chat uh, box. Oh, Trev Wilson's in charge tonight. Oh, the wrench is back. Okay. 
Picked up the oh David Bab. Oh good. I hope you like it, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed by by it. It definitely smelled like chocolate chip cookie dough. Cheers, guys. Here we go. Ooh. Oh shit. Okay, that came off more proof heavy than I thought it was. That is a super fruity on the palate. I gotta say, it's got a lot of like raspberry, blueberry, ADHD whiskey, like peaches and no, maybe not peaches, more like the dark red berry family. Like, yeah, I would say like raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. It's very rich and fruity. It's got some good oak presence on the back end too. Man, good spice. I don't know. That's pretty damn good. It's a little uh, getting like a a little bit of a chocolate note in the back end too. Hmm, that has me thinking what that could be. Um, Travis Wallard, any uh, Scotch Irish or American single malt you want to include tonight? Or is everything going to be bourbon? Um, well. I was going to stick to bourbon, but I will be doing a world whiskey uh, top this year as well. Standouts for me this year um, were, uh, let's see. Oh, for Irish whiskey, the Middleton Dare Gaelic, the Knock Rath Forest. I mean, holy shit. Easily one of the best Irish whiskeys I've ever had in my life. Um, from, a, from a Scotch standpoint, um, the Talisker eight year I loved. Got to try that this year. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, what else did I put up there? Uh, the Cavalon single cask sherry. Oh my god, that I got from World Whiskey. I don't know if that really counts, but that thing was amazing. Uh, love that. The the Glen Going Teapot Dram. I know that's kind of a polarizing whiskey, but I love it. And I got to get a bottle this year. Absolutely loved it. Um, the Octomore 11, uh, is it the 11.1 or the 0. 0.3 that I love so much? I have a I have a video coming out for that soon. But the Octomore this year, the 11s, I thought was uh, delicious. Um, as far as American single malts, I got to try some stuff from Wanderback this year, which is incredible. Um, I'm really, I really want to try the, the lost lantern stuff. Um, uh, what else? Uh, Ardbeg, Ardbeg black, the committee release. I actually really liked that one until I fucking dropped my light on my barrel and smashed it to bits. Unfortunately. Um, Glenn Morangi taste of cake. I thought that was pretty solid. Message room. We don't speak of that Kavalon. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, down more. No, um, uh, Buffalo Trace Hancock's. Um, I like it. I think it's okay. Uh, I think it's a solid bourbon. I don't think it's anything I would chase. I think there's better stuff on the shelf than the Hancock's. Honestly, hey, for me from New York City, I don't think I've ever heard you talk about Widow Jane, Kings County, Brooklyn Distilling, or others. Any reason? I've done. I've uh, well, Widow Jane. I didn't get a chance. I don't see them here. Uh, and they're just one of those bourbons that, you know, when I do see it, they're really pricey. Um, so I haven't had a chance to try too many of that, but I did do a review of the, um, the Kings County. I love what Kings County is doing. I did a review of their bottled and bond bourbon. And I thought it was one of the most impressive bourbons that I've had out of New York. Um, so, uh, Brooklyn distilling, I haven't had too much of Taconic distillery is actually making some amazing stuff. I'm a huge fan of Taconic. Uh, too. So yeah, definitely look for some more New York stuff soon, but yep. Oh my God. The Kilcarin 8 Oloroso. Yeah, that was probably, I know people go crazy on and on about that one, but that thing was amazing. Uh, Hill Rock. Oh yeah. Hill Rock. I have, I love the double cask Hill Rock rye is amazing. Huge fan of that stuff. I tried that live on the channel at some point. Um, came here from the bourbon junkies, love the live for a hundred dollar Joseph Magnus or Remus, Re uh, reserve three. 
Nice. Welcome. Love the love those guys. Um, oh, the Widow Jane Decadence. Isn't that the maple syrup finished one? I think. Let's go to number two here. Ooh. Oh, man. That one. That is an absolute citrus bomb. That's really good. Cherry, spice. It's not as, it's not coming across as, you know, I, I think I want more from it. Go for another sip here. And that's good, but I'm still going to think, I think I like number one over that one. All right, let's go to number three here. Oh, number three is good. Again, I would, I would guess that has to be the blood oath because there's so much of like that earthy, grapey like type of flavor profile coming through, but it's very good. I still, I might like that one over number two as well. Number two, I'm having a hard time identifying. Two and one are kind of playing with me a little bit. They're both fruity. They're both like citrusy, but in different ways. It's hard to, it's hard to kind of figure that out. Uh, did you try the Hillcock cast rank double rye? So it turns and I sent you. I thought that blew the regular rye out of the. Oh yeah, it absolutely did. That finished one blew the regular rye out of the water. Absolutely, Keith. I uh, would love to see you do a head to head with Maker's Milkshake and Pecan Pie since they seem to have been the most popular higher releases. Uh, Caitlin, yeah, I mean. The milkshake, so that was from last year. Yeah, that was uh, – I got to try it, but I never got a bottle of it because by the time I got there, they were gone. Um, uh, any ECBP in the top 10? Absolutely. You'll you'll see some ECBP in the top 10. Uh, which makers was pecan, was pecan pie? That was one of the picks that were done here in Ohio. But, yeah, so the pecan pie was like last was the, the second – was like the milkshake. Because when they release all the different flavors towards the beginning of the year, uh, chocolate milkshake was the one that everybody wanted to get. Um, now pecan pie happens to be that way this year. All right, let's go with this one here. Oh, oh, oh. Woo, that lit me up. Holy shit. Man, even coming off those three, those three, that one still, wow. That was almost like just a lot of alcohol I just got on that one. Oh, well, here comes the flavor now. Another sip. That shit's good. Again, that's all the apple pie, the cinnamon, the fried dough, the huge punch of vanilla, spice. This is, this is easily my number one compared to the other three. The other three are good, but that thing is a monster. Um, all right, so this one's pretty close. Let me try ranking these here. Man, that's good. This one keeps getting better and better. Whatever number two is, the more I sip it. I think this one's going to be last. I mean, these two are super close. I mean, I'm going to say, I mean, this is these are literally like second place and second place B and then last place. So let's find out what they are, and then we're going to start doing our giveaways. 
and find out who just won a bottle of Maker's Mark uh, and also a sample of ER17. So let's go to my fourth place selection. Kind of surprising, but not surprising. Blood Oath Pack 6. Um, again, I like I said, I love this bottle. I thought it was great. It was right on the fringe for me of whether I wanted to put it in, but I just think there are so many good finished whiskeys that came out, finished bourbons, uh, which I know is kind of a dirty word for some, some people. They don't feel like a finished bourbon should be called a bourbon, and I get that part of it, but, you know, until things change, bourbon is bourbon. So that's how I'm gonna. That's how I'm gonna look at it. Uh, but Blood Oath Pack Six, last place. Um, these two will be interesting because I I don't I'm not I'm curious how these fell. Um, let's see. <laughs> so these two were super close, but then you have two bourbons that could be. Because, all right, because this one is, you know, a certain bourbon I'm going to show you, which means the other two bourbons are a lot harder to find. So this one being so close to this, this is the Remus 4 that came in third. Second place, I would assume that's got to be, well, I don't want to be wrong here. Oh, what? Wait, Okay. Second place was the Old Forester 150th. Now remember, this is batch one. This is batch one. And Colonel Taylor Barrel Proof takes it. So this is not surprising. Colonel Taylor, every year the Barrel Proof just does amazingly well. It's so fucking delicious. Um, for the people that have had Old Forester 150th and haven't been too crazy about it, uh, I'm not sure if you've had batch one because batch one to me was head and shoulders, not head and shoulders above batch two, but I would say it's a good head above batch two. And I think it's miles beyond batch three. Uh, Old Forester 1920, I picked in a blind over batch three. Um, so I wasn't a fan of batch three. It's good if you like rye, if you like more rye heavy, um, uh, rye heavy, like old Forester flavor profile. But for me, batch one is where that's where it's at. That's, that was the shit. So, um, yeah, the three, I think the three is just a little bit better than the, than the Remus four for whatever reason. Um, batch two is better at DC's house. <laughs> um, three was my advent calendar for tonight and impressed all. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the old Forester three. But is the E.H. Taylor Battle worth 350 because that is what the stores have? No, I wouldn't. I still wouldn't buy it for 350. Uh, I think I said the most I would pay for it is around 200, um, because of how rare it is, and also because of how um, uh, how consistently good it is each year. You know, I would rather pay. I would rather pay the money for that for a good Buffalo Trace product, which I know is consistently good every year rather than overpaying for like Blanton's or any of these other mash bill two, you know, bottles that people chase down like crazy and pay, you know, crap loads of money for like, you know, Rock Hill Farms, Blanton's, um, you know, any of that stuff. Elmer T. Lee. I, I feel like if I'm going to spend the money on a Buffalo Trace product, it's going to be that something that's consistent, not one of the crazy mash bill two, you know, super smooth sippers that everyone loves. Uh, E.H. Taylor Battle Proof for me all day over well or foolproof, honestly. Um, yeah, so, so at retail, 70 bucks that's amazing. Uh, my local store is E.H. Taylor for 450 Rock Hill Farms for 250 Yeah, that's a no on both. Uh, makes me wonder how good the newer E.H.T. Battle Proofs are. Mine's a 17 or 18, it's pretty decent, good. Um, yeah, I just think, I think overall, though, you see in this blind lineup, how good the quality is of the Remus stuff. Because, I mean, that hung really close with that old Forrester 150th, which is a highly, you know, very hard-to-find release. 
Um, this was like neck and neck. I could have I could have interchanged these. Um, and that's the four, which I didn't even like as much as the three. So when I tell you how underrated the Remus repeal batches are, because it's 11, 12 year MGP whiskey that are that's on the shelf for 80, 90 bucks. I mean, you guys, the people that are still paying 250 to 300 dollars for special MGP picks from non-distilling producers blows my mind still because there's shit on the shelf that's right here that's probably a lot older and a lot better. So stop buying the five-year, six-year-old MGP barrel strength bullshit bottles just because you think it's it's MGP and it's good. There's better stuff on the shelf that you can save about 200 bucks on. Just saying. Yeah, 75 bucks. There you go. The 150 and EHC are both six, seven years. So being the Remus is impressive for them. Yeah, I mean, I, I could, I could understand that part of it. But remember, um, the fact that it hung so close though with the with the 150th, which a lot of people are paying big money for, and you can find it on the shelf for 80, that still is a win for me for the the Remus because it is pretty damn, it is good and. Uh, the first batch back way back when I wasn't that crazy about, but two, three, and four have been just great batches. Oh yeah. The old scout single barrel, 13 years for 75 bucks. Yeah. That's another, those are some great, well, there's some great uh, finds as well. I, I don't have enough old scouts. It's just one of those things. I don't come across it very often with those really good high age picks um, that are just so good. Oh, and another, other bottles that I forgot to mention in my thumbs up, thumbs down, the old Carters. I mean, there were some misses this year with some of the batches that they put out. But when it came to batch five and it came to their 13-year single barrel, which I just got a bottle of, their 13-year single barrel bourbons, I mean, mind-blowing. So good. They they know how to blend. The, the only problem is that the price point on those is out of reach for a lot of people. And you really can't try that stuff before you buy it. You have to go to a really just a usually have to go to like a really good whiskey bar in Kentucky uh, to try to like taste their stuff or even California where they have a lot of the old Carter stuff to like try before you buy, but they are opening their storefront in Kentucky. So hopefully you guys, you know, get to try it. You get to try all their selections there before maybe purchasing a bottle. But um, yeah, I love the old Carter stuff. What barrel numbers are thirteen? I'll, I'll have to let you know later, buddy. I don't my the bottles upstairs. I have to look at it. Um, but yeah, mind blowing shit. All right, Trev Wilson, you're ready, buddy. Here we go. Let's let's wind this down. Uh, one to one fifty seven at the Mash and Drum. Holy shit, one hundred and fifty seven entries. Let's see what do we got here. Uh, let me turn on the volume so you guys can hear what it says. Um, hey, what's up, Bourbon Buddies in the house? What's up, Neil the Deal? Pick a number between 1 and 157. All right, here we go. What do we got? 37. 37. Who do we got? Who's the first winner? Trev Wilson, the wrench. Yeah, Stephen, I, I did speak about that. I thought I love the uh, the Maker's Mark. I thought it was great. Keith Schmidt is already conceding. I'm going to lose. <laughs> Watch Keith Schmidt come out as the winner. Yeah, 37 it picked. Uh, all right, we're just waiting on. Uh, Master Drum, you sexy beast, you're working out those guns? Uh, yes, I've actually dropped about 15 pounds uh, to the whole COVID thing. So I'm feeling spelt and feeling in shape and getting better. 37 is Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker, congratulations. Uh, let me write that down. Kyle Walker, the first winner. Kyle Walker, are you in the chat? 
what did you think of the MM46 cast rank? Oh, huge fan. That was another hit for me. Uh, actually, it's right here. The Maker's Mark 46 cast strength. Um, that was a hit for me. But I love the 46. Um, some people don't like it. I think the 46 is the best product that Maker's Mark makes on the shelf. Other than when these limiteds come out, uh, you know, from their core lineup. And I thought the cast strength was pretty delicious. Uh, Kyle Walker plays for Tottenham. Oh, Kyle Walker, I'm so stoked. Nice, Kyle. All right, Kyle, since you're the first winner, I'm going to give you the choice. Do you want the bread pudding or do you want Grandpa's Toddy? Uh, remember, bread pudding is a mix of staves, uh, mostly French cuvee, Maker's 46. It's got a French spice. Then you have the Grandpa's Toddy, which has eight roasted French mocha staves in it, which is probably chocolatey as hell. So, Kyle Walker, which one do you like? Uh, top 10 down to 54. Congrats, Kyle. Okay, nice. Congrats on dropping 15, Jason. What does 15 mean? Mocha sounds great. Okay, so he's going to get the grandpa's toddy. And an Eagle Rare sample. Okay. Uh, and then bread pudding. We'll go to the next winner. Uh, yeah, he went mocha. Um, oh, pounds. Yeah, duh. Sorry. Yeah, 15 pounds. Dropped the 15, doing a lot of workouts and just – I went, uh, I went like, I did one of those like online, like meal delivery services where you eat everything like super healthy and prepared for you. Uh, I did this one called Sprinely or Sprinly or something like that. It's really good. Um, uh, it definitely, yeah, it, it's definitely worked. Uh, you know, the COVID 15 was a real thing. And I was like, dude, my jeans are getting tight. My skinny jeans are getting tight. <laughs> so I need to, need to lose, drop some pounds. So, all right. All right, let's do this again. Pick a number between 1 and 157. Here we go. Second winner coming up. 86. Trev Wilson, who do we got? 86. 86, 86, 86. Jason Coates says his normal jeans are becoming skinny jeans. <laughs> Uh, Paul Ledbetter says the same thing. 65. What do you got? I'm oh, sorry, 86. 86 is the number. Who do we got, Trev? Eighty six goes. Oh, Jerry Black. Nice. Jerry Black. He's usually a fixture in the chat. Congratulations, man. You're gonna get the bread pudding. Bread pudding, and you get a little Eagle Rare 17 in there. So congrats. So both of you guys, email me at the mash and drum at gmail.com to uh, claim your bottles, uh, get with you, and get your, uh, your addresses together. And I will get these out in the mail um, probably this, this weekend. So uh, what can I say? That was a lot of fun. Congrats to the winners. Congrats to Kyle. Congrats to Jerry. Thanks for everyone for hanging out tonight. This is the biggest audience I've ever had. This was freaking sick. Uh, apparently, people like to hear me, you know, complain about uh, bourbon releases or talk about how much I like them. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate that. Look out for my next reviews next week, guys. We're going to be doing the Eagle Rare 17. We'll do a full review of that one. And also the brand new Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye, which I cannot wait to try. So... Very excited about that. Also, we have a four gate, uh, four gate blind uh, battle coming up with uh, that's one, six, and nine. Um, and what was the other one I had lined up? Oh yeah, all the rabbit holes. Going to be doing uh, the entire lineup of rabbit hole. Going to be doing a, a, a full review of that, and also the new Octomore. So a lot of content coming before the end of the year still. So see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in tonight. This was a ton of fun. 
Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I always love talking to you guys. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers. And I'll see you guys next week. Thanks to all the uh, to everybody and cheers to all the winners. Take care, everybody.